Our special family, it's good to be with you this morning. And uh, it, it's so lovely to see so many visitors here this morning. Said uh, Leon and Elsie, yeah, it's nice to bring mom along. That's, that's fantastic. And we have the Burtises here. They are uh, they're babysitting while Grant and Bonnie are away. And uh, Laurel, oh, it's, it's so nice to see um, you and Ryan out here again. Oh, what a blessing it is. Uh, God is good, hey? God is good. And to see how he's brought healing to uh, your life. Taryn and Nathan, my, oh, and Anthea, this is awesome to see them around. You know, Taryn, I don't know if you remember this. You probably won't remember this. The very, <laughs> the very first accident, car accident I ever had was on my way to go and babysit you. I, I don't know. And now we're the same age. I don't know how all that works. Also. But hey, it's good to be with you uh, this morning. You ready for a joke? Can I tell you a blonde joke? So this blind guy sitting in a restaurant, you know, and, 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 and people could see the stick and everything. So what he did to, to uh, sort of kind of break the ice so he could just get chatting, you know, he'd tell jokes. He was, th th that's the way he found he could open the thing. And so he, he, he heard these ladies sitting next door to him and he said, can I tell you a, a blonde joke? A lady said, listen, before you tell a blonde joke, let me tell you, I am six foot two, I am blonde, and I am a bodybuilder. The, the lady sitting next to me, she's blonde as well. She is six foot three, and she is a, a kickboxing champion. And the lady sitting on the other side, I want to tell you now, she is blonde as well, and she is the world ladies heavyweight boxing champion. Do you still want to tell your blonde joke? He said, no, not if I'm going to have to explain it three times. <laughs> Hey, it's good to ha have you here with this morning. So this morning didn't start off so well. Uh, Max called me this morning. He said, we had a break in here last night. And Anita, you know that, of course. Uh, they broke into Anita's classroom. I, I don't see if they've stolen anything, but uh, kind of reminds me of that lady. She heard this commotion in her kitchen, and she went down there. There's a burglar in her kitchen. It's dark in there. And she didn't have any weapons on, she had nothing. All she used, she was a good old Church of Christ member, so she could only, only weapon she had was scripture. She just shouted, Acts 2, 38. As a boy, the guy just froze. Eventually, the police arrived, arrested him, and, and uh, you know, switched all the lights on. And uh, they said, how come he didn't run away? He said, because I heard her say, I've got an axe and two 38s. So, uh, <laughs> so um, in, anyway. It's uh, good to have you with us. Folks, we, we've uh, seen a Minette uh, up here. You, know, you, you don't know, this might be the last, last time Minette stands up here and, and leads worship because the, the, the doctor said the baby could come any minute now. And, and you know, this, this is my grandson we're talking about here. So, but uh, for the first time in my life, I really hope my grandson does not look like me because it really would be horrible to have a baby born with a beard. You know, that would be just... <laughs> So, so wrong. But, but Minette and Chanel, we need to keep our ladies, please, in our prayers. And um, because this, these are exciting times, but, you know, they're also nervous times. And um, we need to, to, to keep them in our prayers. Will you pray with me before we share in the message this morning? Our Almighty Father in heaven, it's so good to be with your family in your presence, acknowledging Jesus and what he did for us on the cross, and being very aware that, Father, your spirit lives inside of our lives. And, Father, as we worship you as, co as a collector this morning, we can lift up prayers to you, Father, prayers to, to thank you for the healing, Laurel's body, Father, prayers to, uh, Father, intercession on behalf of Manette and Chanel as their babies are due uh, soon. Father, uh, prayers of intercession for our loved ones who, a large group, who are overseas at the moment and not with us this morning. Father, this is the Lord's Day. And so we come together as family and we lift up all these loved ones to you in prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I nearly forgot to say, um, Cynthia's back uh, with us, haven't seen her for a while, she's been uh, over in the US of A, in Texas, 
and um, I hope you said hello to Trump for me anyway. Um, must have. Folks, we have been in a series called Going Deeper, and today this is a three-part series. Today I finalized that series, and uh, I want to remind you how we kind of started off. I said to you, remember the first time you went into the deep end? Maybe you can't remember exactly the time, but you remember the emotions. How you stood there, and you know, you've been playing in the, in the shallow end, and your parents said, shallow end, shallow end, shallow end, and, you, and, 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 and now it was deep end time. And, and, and how maybe you shook your hands, maybe your knees, and you went to the edge, and then you ran away, and you went to the edge, and eventually you jumped into the deep end. But from then, it was never the shallow end again. It wasn't as scary as you thought. And I've been encouraging you in this series, let's go to the deep end with our faith. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's to trust the Lord with our finances. It's a scary thing. To trust the Lord with our relationships. To trust the Lord when I say, I forgive you and I just let it go. Those are scary things, but it's going deeper. And so I've been encouraging you to let, let, let's, let's take our spiritual, spirituality to another level. And we've looked at a number of scriptures. We've looked at Hebrews, where, where, where the writer of Hebrews uh, says, oh, come on, come on, come on, uh, readers. And he's writing to J these Jewish readers. He said, time to put down the bottle. Remember, he said, you've been with milk for a while, but now you need to move on to solid food. Some of you have been members of the, uh, of the church forever. You're still not teachers. By this time, some of you ought to be teachers, he said. And one of, the, one of the, the true characteristics of a mature person is they put down the bottle and they picked up a fork. They're able to feed themselves. And that scripture in, in um, Hebrews chapter 5, he said, by constant use, constant use, um, they feed themselves. I know it's the, the church helps with that. The church and the preaching and the, and the worship and the small groups and the studies and all that, they help. But it's our responsibility, your responsibility, and my responsibility Mature adults are able to feed themselves. They do not depend on others to feed them. That is a baby. And so the writer of Hebrews talks about that. So when we dive into the, the deep end, we feed ourselves. We can swim ourselves. The only time we go back to the shallow end is to help a newbie, to help somebody else. Hey, come on. Let me show you how to swim, and I'll tell you what. Then you come dive in the deep end with me. And then uh, the last week we, we spoke about this incredible passive scripture where, where, where the Apostle Paul said to this wonderful church in Philippi, you need to work out your own salvation. And in that passage he said, God is working in you, now you work out. And, and, and I gave you that analogy just in terms of our normal food and exercise. In fact, calories in, calories out. Calories in. And if you take too many calories in and you don't let them out, this is what happens. Hey, this is what happens. Is, you know, what happens. Things go out of proportion. But when you get the balance right, calories in and calories out, you land up with a nice proportion. Now, unfortunately, too many of us as Christians, we take the calories in. You know, the spiritual calories in. And, and we do a Bible study and worship and read and podcast and work, uh, music and all, all that type of stuff. We've got spiritually fat but we have not spiritually fit because we're not working it out. And I said to you last week, we've got all those passages of scriptures in the, uh, that tells us how to work out our salvation. Love one another. Encourage one another. Forgive one another. Uh, who are the people that are you helping? How are you exercising your salvation? How are you demonstrating that God has worked in you? Who, who have you walked along with in, in the, the Christian walk? Who, who's that um, single mom who's really struggling? You, you came and tag teamed with her. Who's that person financially? They're really in the. You, you came alongside. Who's that person that needs somebody to have an ear to listen to? Just to listen to. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling because God is working in you. Today we conclude our series, and, and I want to speak to you this morning about from me to we. From me to we. You know, there's certain things in life you don't do by yourself. Deep sea diving is one of those things. You always go with a buddy. It's safer and it's more exciting when you get to see a buddy. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like going to... I'm just trying to think of some other... This is a silly illustration. But no one goes to the game reserve all by themselves. 
oh, what a lovely elephant, what a lovely rhino. No, it's so much nicer when you share it with somebody. And folks, the Christian life is like that. It's better together. There are certain things that are better together. No one climbs Everest by themselves. In fact, I, I, you, every now and then you hear about these solo ascents. Hey, he got there by himself. <laughs> he forgot to tell you about the five Sherpas that were with him there carrying his pack. No one does the great things in life by themselves. It's better together. And, and the writer of Hebrews is going to say exactly the same thing, that, that, that faith is better together. We need to go from me to we. So we're going to go to the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and the writer, whether it's Paul or somebody else, and he's going to say a number of things. I want to remind you as we start, he's going to be speaking to Jewish people. And so they understood all the symbolism. So, so uh, let me throw you into verse 19. Therefore, now therefore we always know that when he says therefore, he said a whole bunch of things. And, and up to, this is verse uh, chapter 10. So he said nine chapters of stuff. Uh, after all that stuff he said, he can say therefore. The writer has said a bunch of things of what God has done in and through people's lives. And look at our history. And, and he's going to go into chapter 11 and talk about these incredible people who have done stuff in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since, incredible word, we have confidence. We have confidence. By the way, folks, you should never doubt your salvation. If you doubt your salvation, there, there is something wrong. You should, you should uh, uh, Paul wrote to, I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. You know that you have eternal life. You're not saying, ooh, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure whether we're going to make, make it or not. I mean, you, 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 Jan Putin and I, when, the, the days we wrote matric, we always just said, how did the exam go? And we used to do it like this. this. This was pass mark. You know what this means? This means? Whoa, A's and B's. But it also meant, if you got up here, it meant you're neglecting your friends. Okay, so this, I know it's not good to say, but this, this was great. We passed, but we never neglected our friends. Okay, so, and, and so listen, here it is. We don't want to get to, hey, get to the pearly gates, I'm not sure. Hey, you need to have confidence to enter the most holy place. This is Old Testament symbolism by the blood of Jesus. Not bulls, goats, rams, doves. Now it is by the blood of Jesus that we've got three. Let, let's carry on reading from verse 20. By a new and living way opened for us through the curtain. Now remember there was the Holy of Holies, there was this curtain there. And by the way, ordinary folk could not go through the curtain. You could not get into the Holy of Holies. That was the high priest, and, and the high priest, no one else could go there. In fact, he had a chain on, uh, uh, around his leg, because if he got inside there and he died inside the Holy of Holies, you couldn't go and fetch him. Pull him out with the chain. So, uh, but now, hey, we get to go through the curtain. That is, his body, Jesus, through his body, has made the uh, 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 inaccessible for you and I to get to go into God's presence, and and since we have a great high priest, that's Jesus. No, no longer the old priest. No longer even Melchizedek. None of the other guys. Uh, a priest over his house of God. Now, I'm going to read the next couple of uh, verses, and I want you to look at. He's going to start each verse or each section there with two words, and those two words are "Let us, let us." Let us. Let, he, says, he says it several times. He never says, let me or let you. It's let us. Because in Christianity, it's better when we do this together. Let's read these, and then I'm just going to uh, draw some inferences from there, and then the, the, the lesson will be closed. Verse 22. And he said all this about Jesus, the high priest. He's gone into, and he's made us. He's torn that curtain out. We're in the presence of God. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. 
You have faith in God, it brings incredible assurance. Man, you stand strong. Your head is up. You're in the presence of God. You're covered. You're bought with a price, bought again. I mean, yeah, blood bought. And, and so with that faith, we have full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled. There's, uh, you know, the old days when they, 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 took, they, they slaughtered the blood and goats and bulls and rams and, and pigeons and all. They took the blood, they sprinkled it on the people. And now we, we have been, we've had our hearts sprinkled symbolically to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let's move on. Verse 22. The second, let us, look at that, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Here it is, let us. Faith is not a me thing. Faith is a we thing. Verse 24, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good works. I'm going to back to, to, to verse, uh, is it verse 22? I might have got these verses across. Let us, therefore, draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings. This morning, four things. I just want to give you four things that where we is better than me where we is better than me so verse 22 again says let us go back to that uh, that previous uh, slide please Dale let us draw near to God let us draw near to God number one number one as we go deeper you want to take your faith to the next level we draw near to God better when we do it together when we do it together it, it brings an intensity that you do not get by yourself. You know, you can take a coal and you can get it to burn brightly, but when you stick it in with other coals, man, there's an intensity that happens that cannot happen by itself. You can hear a worship song on the radio and you can sing along and it can stir stuff within you. But I tell you what, it's so much better when you're here with the family, or with you with your small group, maybe with your church family. You just, there is this, Man, it can stir emotions. And I can guarantee you the times that you, uh, you have really just felt the Lord's presence in your life, it's most probably when you're with the Lord's people. The tear runs down the eye, you get this emotion, you get this lump in your throat, somebody said something, you sang a song, uh, maybe you know, we, one of our praise and prayer evenings, it just, there's a stirring deep within me. Could it be my Savior? So, and, and, and that happens when we're together. We draw near to God together. It's so much better together. When we consider our faith together. Th there are times in our lives, in my life, I know it must be happening in your life, our faith grows cold. And we need to be together where somebody else can step in and say, Hey, Brew. Hey, sis, how you doing? Tough day? Can I pray with you? Come, let's work together. Let's, let's worship together. And um, sometimes we need, we need a friend to speak fire in our bones. There's a time that we just kind of, the faith is slipping there. We need someone, someone from the faith to step into our lives and speak to us and say, come on. blood -bought people do not behave like that. They don't speak like that. They don't have that attitude. We're going to go deeper with this thing. Let's go together. And, and there, I can tell you many examples, many, many examples of, of uh, bright, intelligent people say, hey, listen, man, you know, I've got a job there in, in Pufara, out of Mongolia. They're going to pay me these big bucks. But don't, don't worry about me. I'm going to be strong for the Lord there. I wish I could tell you that always happens. I don't know what happens. You know, you're all by yourself and you're fired up and you do. And, and it, it's hard. It's hard by yourself. And I know that because that's, that's the kind of way we grew up. And I'm grateful for a, a mother and a father who insisted every first day of the week, the four of us, the five of us, we met in the lounge and we had to get dressed for Sunday school. Mom taught Sunday school. She had three kids in the Sunday school. That was Grant and Debbie and myself. And, and Dad used to open the word. It's hard by yourself. It's so much easier when we draw near to God together. Let's go on to the second point. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse uh, 
22, he says, as he continues in this vein, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed with pure water. Number two, we defeat sin together. It's so much easier when we together to live the Christian life. Because you know what? When I'm with you, I sin less. It's just the truth. When I'm with you and with you with, with me, you watch your language, don't you? You watch your attitude. You're so careful what you say. You so, it, it, we, we're so less likely to do wrong when we are together. That's what makes it so important that, that we defeat sin together. You know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. We, we're, we look after each other together. And every now and then, uh, you know, I need someone to remind me. Hey, come on, we're going to defeat sin together. Sin will not get a hold of you. you won't, it, it won't pull you down and get that attitude. Let's move on to the next, uh, next uh, let us. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. You know, we're not, we're not gonna, we're gonna move out there, we're not gonna duck and dive out there. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. The hope we profess. Number three of, of four this morning, we hope together. We hope together. Well, I encourage you. Those are the scriptures I mentioned. The other Bible is full of them. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. Love one another. And, and, you know, just we encourage one another as we see the day drawing near. You know, sometimes things come across our way that can cause us to swerve. And we need brothers and sisters in Christ to come along. It might be a death in the family. It might be an illness. It might be a, a break in a relationship. There might be a loss of a job or a failure or a financial collapse. And, you know, those things can, can cause us to swerve in our Christian life. But when we're together, hey, hey, can I hold that steering wheel of our faith together? Together we can stand strong. Remember in Ecclesiastes we read that, you know, a two-fold two, uh, cord, yes, yeah, a three-fold cord, not easily broken. We bring God into our lives. We bring our family. We stand strong. We hope together. And then our final one this morning, we'll find in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. And let us, let us. I remember uh, Colin Macau once uh, praying about, uh, 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 teaching a lesson about all the vegetables in the Bible. And this was one of them, lettuce. Okay. And, and let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good works. Come on, come on, let's get going. It's kind of, a, it kind of a, you know, we just had the July handicap, and, uh, you know, those horses towards the end of the race, they, they need a little help to remind them this is a race, this is not a little canter. And they get spurred on with a little, with a little uh, a tickle of a, a thing. But, you know, we encourage one another when we're here together. When we sing this, these songs, Precious Cornerstone, Sure Foundation. I love that song. Pre this, is, this is who we are. We stand strong. When our, our shoulders are back, our chins hold high, we hang in there, we hang in there, and hang in there, and we encourage one another to hang in there. Number four, number, and, and look at this, we, we spur one another on to love and good works. Number four, we change the world together. Together. You know, in the, in the Christian sense, one and one does not equal two. One and one equals three. I want you to think back on the history of this country. The first schools in this country started by missionaries. Not one missionary. Oh, they came. They came from all over the world. And they loved the Lord. So we need we to start these Christian schools. The first clinics in this country, Christians. Together, working together. The first universities, have a look, check in the history. Christians working together. The first hospitals in this country. The, look, at, look what the Red Cross has done throughout the world. Why is there a cross there? I'll tell you what. Christians saying, let's go together. Let's spur one another on to love and to good works. It's incredible what we can do 
together. And then he closes with a, this amazing verse. And, and you would expect him to close with this amazing verse. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Because he said, let us, let us, let us, let us, let us do this. Let us do this. Let's spur one another. Let, let us hold fast. Let, he, he concludes this little section but with this. Not giving up meeting together. It's important to be together because it's going from me to we. When we are together, it's we. As some are in the habit of doing, oh man, the writer says, I cannot believe people have decided they don't need church. We are Bible study. It's just small. You know, that's for weak Christians. Just Lord and I, we like this. Hey, we one. Let me tell you what. You're not one because that's not the way Christianity works. But encourage one another. Let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Probably the day Jesus Christ returns. Some people think it's the first day of the week. But you know what? Can you imagine you're writing to those, those first century Christians, the persecution, the hardship. I mean, just a family member gets arrested. Someone else gets put to death. He said, hey, for those of us who are left, we together. We've got to encourage one another. You've lost someone. You've had a, a, a husband who was a, arrested. We're going to get together and we can encourage one another. Nothing has changed, folks. Because you've got to work. Things are hard at work. Things are hard at work. Financially, relationship, the, the stresses on our life. But we together, we come together and we worship. But encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Let me remind you this morning as we close. We is greater than we. A deep faith needs friends. A deep faith needs friends. You will not go to the depths of the relationship with Jesus that you can possibly have without going with somebody. Jesus never, think about this, Jesus never created a crowd. He created a crew. He took a bunch of men. Come, let's do this together. And, and, uh, you know, if, if you go and ask someone who is advanced in their faith, they will tell you about a who, not a what, that got them there. They will tell you about someone who helped them along the way. Not a what. Anyone. Anyone who has spent any life in Jesus will tell you about someone who came alongside of us and helped us along this, this road. And there are depths that can only be accessed through community. And I'm asking you as we close this morning, do you have people like this in your life? I'm not asking you, if, do you have friends? No, you've got friends. But do you have faith, a faith community friends? Spiritual, strong friends that will come say, let us do this together. Maybe you want to just start that journey this morning. Perhaps you have not even been baptized into Jesus Christ yet. We can do that for you this morning on any particular time. And I really invite you to, 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 to do that. Just start this incredible journey. And then let's go deep together. Maybe this is the morning you say, Oof, I've been spending too much time in the shallows. It's time now for me with family to go deeper. Let's pray together and then we'll sing. Father, we conclude this series by reminding ourselves that we need to go deep with Jesus and we do that better together. Father, let's move from milk to meat. Help us to feed ourselves. And Father, because you have worked in us, help us to work out our salvation. And this morning, Father, let us, let us, let us. We understand we is better than me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing.